Let's begin page 426, 426, farther along. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 426. On the second, when death has come and taken the loved ones, it leaves our home so lonely and drear. Then to be wondered by others' thoughts, living so wicked year after year, farther along with no love about. your foot. Stop that. It's just one of those, huh? Feel like you're at a camp meeting or whatever and you know, that song is so, isn't that just on, spot on? Did you look at the words or are you just listening to yourself? Farther along, not now. We, we want everything now. I want to know now. That's not faith. Right? Yeah. We have to trust him now. And then down the road, he'll figure it out whatever we need to know. How many of you want to know now? Good for you. Wait, let's try that again. I want to see if you're teachable. How many of you want to know now? Amen. I do. Don't you? How many of you are praying for VBS? How many of you will fast and pray all week for VBS? <laughs> Beth. How many of you, we're having a meeting tonight, so if you could stay, we're going to, well, we'll be here a while, so just, we're, we've got a pizza truck coming so we can eat. But. Pepperoni. Pepperoni. Ready to pray? Let's pray. Dear Father, I'm here tonight. In some sense, I have to be. But I want to be. But more than I want to be, I need to be. So my prayer is that you'll minister to me. I don't want to come in thinking, boy, they need me. They don't need me. I need you. And they need you. So I pray that through me, I'm, I'm willing, just do what you want tonight with me, through me, in me. 
so that we all can be helped. We need to see Jesus. We don't need to see our problems. We don't need to see our, our woes and our cares. We don't need to see anything but Jesus. We need to see him high and lifted up. We need to see him as the answer to all our problems, all our needs. We need to see him as the only one that can really satisfy us. Lord, I pray that tonight we would enjoy you. If I was a disciple and I traveled with you and we were all sitting around, I'm sure I would enjoy you. And that's what I want tonight to be. I want to just sit in your presence. And we're praying, Lord, that your presence would be so real tonight. We know that your presence is real in each of us. Because you said, look, you are my temple. So we, we know, Lord, that your presence is here. But I pray we would experience your presence. Not know that the Bible says you're in us, but that we would know, that we would experience your working. Work in us tonight. If someone's here and they're not saved, you're the best one to convince them that not only is Jesus the only way, he's the best way. He's not one of many ways. He is the only way, but he is the best. Thank you. Thank you that I could be born again. Lord, tonight we want everything we do, everything we say, the serious and the light may glorify the Lord Jesus. We're just here to enjoy him. Speak to every lady tonight. Speak to every man tonight. Speak to every young person. We're not here to be here. We're here to be challenged. We're here to be helped. We're here to be built up. Please do that, Lord. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Page 431 in your hymnals in the garden. Page 431. Music is supposed to minister to you, does it? It ought to. It, that's challenging, isn't it? If you have your bulletin, would you grab that? The only thing we're concerned about this week is Bible school. 
And the Lord will do whatever he wants to do, but we want to pray and trust him and work as hard as we can. So if you have any desire to do, if you just want to show up, we'll find something for you to do. You say, oh, I've got plenty to do. Your best decision would be to serve the Lord. No matter what else you do. Say, I have a chance. Listen, in eternity, if you say, I have a chance to work overtime and make lots of money, you know what I would choose? I would choose to do what the Lord will remember forever. When you get to heaven, the Lord ain't going to go, hey, that's a good move on working overtime. You got to buy more junk. You don't need more junk. You need to serve the Lord. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what counts. So we're not doing this so you get more rewards. We're doing this because we're trying to reach kids. Man, kids really need it. Hey, they're not getting it in school. They're not getting it in the Christian school. You're awful quiet, but you know I'm right. We, we just want to reach them. We're not trying to teach them anything. We're, look, our Bible school, we're trying to get them saved if they're not saved. We're trying to encourage them. We're trying to have fun with them. We're trying to show them that you could be a Christian and have fun. Hello? We're trying to show them that we love them no matter how they behave. We're trying to show them that we want to reach them. And the goal, let's be honest. The goal is to get them beyond this week. Oh, I never thought of that. Yes, you did. You're just afraid to say it. Right? When somebody visits the church, do, do we say, well, hope you don't come back. Thanks for coming. Hope you never come back again. We Look, we know they need it. Right? They, they need, we preach the Bible. We know they need that. Hey? Am I preaching to the choir? They need that. They need that. So just be involved. I, and I don't know. We'll, we'll try to let you know. I don't know where we're at on snacks and all that. But I'm sure. <laughs> Aren't you glad you're a Baptist? We're going to have the best food in heaven. Our restaurants will be the most popular. In heaven. I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about. You say there are restaurants in heaven? Look it up. I'm not sure if it's there, but. I'm hoping there's pizza up there. So, There's a sign-up list if you would like to help in any way. Or tonight, tonight, let Nathan or Christy know if you would like to help in some way. Maybe you can only help one night. Maybe you can only help a couple of nights. We'll, we'll take it. You can't have too many workers. So that's our goal is just to be – We here's here, – now look at me. Listen, this isn't usual, but let's just say it. It's better if the workers outnumber the attenders. And if I'm a kid and I come to church and I see all these adults, I'm thinking, man, they want to be here. But if they see a few of us trying to do everything, they might be thinking, where is everybody? How come they don't want to be here? So you're making us feel bad. You're catching on. We... I'm just, I'm talking to you about eternity. I'm not talking to you about this week. I'm talking to you about what, what matters in eternity. Right? Hello? Home? You're home. We are honored. Amy's, you know Amy's sister, Shelly. There, and I don't know, Rebecca, have you ever been here? I mean, when you were a kid, a long time ago. But Jeremy, you've never been here. This is their oldest daughter, Rebecca, her husband, Jeremy. And they're visiting from South Carolina. <laughs> Make sure you greet them. And they have, is it Cooper? I can't keep all those kids straight. That name's okay. <laughs> Ushers come quick. We're in a hurry. We got a meeting. Got a meeting. Heavenly Father, today, from early this morning, when we got ready to come, 
we knew it was the Lord's day. We set it aside. We planned on being here. And I hope that we didn't just want it to be like we're fulfilling a duty. We want it to be special. And Lord, I, I don't understand. I don't know why every time we meet with you, Sundays and Wednesdays, why can't it be special? We want to be. I'm asking you, God, make this service tonight because of you, not because of any of us, not because of me, not because of the sermon. Make it special because of you. When you save me, that's very special. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for saving me. I don't ever want to get over that. And I pray that if there's people in this room, if there's people watching who talk like this, they say, I've been saved all my life. God, they've just gotten used to it. They've, they've taken it for granted. It doesn't matter if they never sinned, as they say it. They just grew up in church, and when they got old enough, they got saved. Lord, I, I think it's so important that we realize that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Because we're sinners. And now we're born again children of God. We want to express to you tonight the best we can what you mean to us. Work in our hearts. Challenge us. Lord, we ought to leave here better than we came in. We ought not just leave and say, that's over. We ought to leave here and say, man, I, I'm going to do better for God. I'm going to be closer to God. I'm going to love God more. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist.
Thank you, choir. Please take your hymnals once again and turn to 440, page 440, till the storm passes by. Let's all stand, shall we? In the dark of the midnight, Sophia is coming to play a special.
Amen. Sam, jo uh, Joshua, Jonah chapter 1. I'm, I know, I know. Jonah chapter 1. So you preach from there a lot. At least you're listening. Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1. Here's what makes the Bible the Bible. You can preach two messages from one scripture. When you think you've exhausted the Bible, you have not. So this is not about, oh, I've heard messages on Jonah 1. This is God using it like only God can use it. I, I saw something here that I felt that I wanted to share with you. I felt that it challenge me and if we're honest and want to be challenged and we're teachable then we can be helped how many of you want to be helped how many of you need help how many of you don't want help Jonah chapter 1 good good call good call be teachable always be teachable listen to me be teachable you've not arrived not, the Bible deals with that, does it not? If we think we're standing, come on, come on, wake up. Jonah chapter 1, verse 4. Jonah is told specifically by God what to do and where to go. And he said no. Have you ever done that? Verse 4. But the Lord, verse 3 says, but Jonah. You, you can oppose God, and you can fight against God, but you cannot, listen, you cannot get away with not doing what he wants you to do. Verse 4, but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. Say, can he do that? He did it here. Can he send a wind in your life? <laughs> he sure can. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea. So that the ship was like to be broken. Verse 5 says, then the mariners were afraid. Some storm, isn't it? If they're afraid, if, if the sailors are afraid, it's bad. It's bad. And you'll see in this story, and I hate to warn you, I hate to help you, I hate to make it easy on you, but we're about to see they get more afraider. Say, that's not a word. You're not preaching. You know what I mean, though, don't you? They went from being afraid to freighter. You say, it scared her. I know, it scared her, I know. Some of you are just no fun. I'm kind of hoping there's a purgatory. Verse 5 says, then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God. His God. His own God, the one he wanted. Not, not the God, his God. And cast forth the wares that were in the ship, the packages, the cargo. Into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah... But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship. And he lay. And the Hebrew word for fast asleep, the Hebrew word is senseless. He wasn't just asleep physically, he was asleep spiritually. That's where I don't want to be. I don't want to be asleep 
spiritually. Some of you are good at being asleep physically in church. You're trying to be more like Jonah. Quit it. There's a storm. He knows he's on the ship. He forgot, obviously, that God knows he's on the ship. He decides to soothe himself by falling asleep. That's what depressed people do. They sleep a lot. And it tells us there that as the mariners are throwing cargo off the ship, they don't want to sink. Too much water in the ship. Jonah tells us, because I believe he's the author, thank God he was obedient and wrote what God told him to write. And it says, but Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. Thank God Jonah was honest about his life. Verse 6 says, so the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, what meanest thou, O sleeper? He didn't just call him sleeper, see the O, O sleeper. And that means that the shipmaster was surprised that he could sleep. You know what I said this morning? The world expects us, if we have what we're telling them they need, they're expecting us to tell them. They're not expecting us to keep it from them. They're expecting us to go through effort to let them know, hey, by the way, the only way a person gets into heaven is through Christ. When we don't tell them, they think it's not very good. And then when we say, oh, by the way, I guess I should tell you how to be born again. They think, why would you wait so long? The shipmaster comes to Jonah in verse 6, and he says, oh, sleeper. The shipmaster, and obviously the, all the sailors, the mariners, cannot believe, number one, that Jonah, they don't know anything. All they know is he's sleeping. They can't believe the shipmaster, oh, oh, sleeper. He can't believe that Jonah is senseless about what's going on. I hate the news. It's so depressing. Can I get a witness? I hate it. They're all nuts. They're not crooked. They're nuts. You say, well, they're, you know, they're just evil. They're not evil. They're nuts. They're crazy. Some of the stuff they're doing is insanity. You, you follow the news and you think this can't be true. This is crazy. This is, this is nuts, insane. We know the hope of the world. Say, man, let's get the right guy in the White House. It, that isn't it. See, that's, what, that's what's hurting us. The shipmaster comes in verse 6. He says, what meanest thou, O sleeper, arise, Call upon thy God, if so be that God should be capital G there. When every man prayed to his own God, it was small g. They sense something's telling them that something's not right. We say, we say, we believe the Lord's coming at any moment. I'm sorry. I don't know what you want to hear, but I just feel like I, I need to tell you what you need to hear. How many of you believe the Lord's coming at any moment? You believe he could come. Do you really believe he could come tonight? Do you believe that? Are you living like it? Are you living like he actually could come tonight? What if God sent you a text and he said, don't tell anybody, this is God, don't tell anybody. I don't want anybody else to know that I text you. 
God texts me all the time. I'm not supposed to tell you that, but he texts me all the time. See, I'm his favorite. <clears throat> what if God sent you a text and the text said, I just thought I'd give you a heads up. When you go to bed tonight, you're not going to wake up here. You're going to wake up in heaven. Would you do anything different? Do you make any phone calls? Hello? Do you realize all of a sudden these men are telling Jonah, the preacher, to pray? I don't know what you think. Arise, look at verse 6. Arise, call upon thy God. We shouldn't have to be told to pray. What an insult that the world would tell us how to live our Christian life. If we live our Christian life like we ought to, you know, watch now, you know that if Jonah was right with God, they wouldn't have had to told him to pray. But they have to tell him two things. Wake up. See it, verse 6. Arise, wake up, and call upon thy God. One of the best decisions I've made besides being saved and being married, got to throw that in, is to not watch the news and not listen to the news, but pray. What, what a tremendous decision. Say, you are uninformed. I'm not uninformed. Hey, I'm not staying here. They can do what they want with here. I'm going there. And if, you, if you're right and Jesus may come tonight, I want to live like it. They tell him, arise, call upon, verse 6, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Does that sound like the world today? You know, they know they're lost. They know that they're in trouble. They know, even though they don't want to admit it, they know that God's up there and he's mad and the hammer's going to fall. Verse 7, and they said, woe well, to his fellow. Come, let us cast lots. Say, what's that? Gambling. I mean, it's a, a game of chance. Say, why would they do that? Because they don't know what else to do. They don't have a Bible. I mean, they're not saying, we want to talk to your God. They're saying, we'll talk to our God. You talk to your God. We need all the gods we can get. And by the way, we're going to cast lots. I mean, that's the world, man. They don't know what to do. They don't know what the Bible says. They don't know what's happening. In fact, when we're all raptured, they're going to go, what? The world happened. Because they won't know. Let us cast lots. Verse 7, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Now, here's what I think. You don't have to think this. You don't have to think anything. You can think what you want. I think that God loaded the dice. Now, I think that God can point you out in a crowd. And I think God said, these poor, ignorant men, they've got a prophet on their boat. They're in a storm. The storm's there because of the prophet. And now the only thing they need to do is, is cast lots and hope that they figure out what's going on. Man, aren't you glad you have the Bible? Aren't you glad that you can read what's going on? In the last days, it says, perilous times shall come. And it's all summed up in the first thing. 
Men shall be lovers of themselves. That's exactly where we are. And we fight that every day. They cast lots. Guess what? The lot, verse, verse 7, the lot fell upon Jonah. Huh, what a coincidence. God's in charge of everything. Verse 8, watch this. Man, I read this. I got all, When I read this, I got on my knees. Verse 8 says, then they said unto him, watch this, two words, tell us. When he got on that ship, what did he say? I would like a room in the bottom that's dark. I want to sleep. You with me? Hey, you with me? When he got on that ship, he did not say, just want you guys to know, this may be a rough ride. I'm a disobedient prophet. And God may judge all of us. So I'm going way below deck and I'm going to sleep. Good luck. What did he say? Nothing. Listen to me. He didn't say anything. He just went below deck and fell asleep. And now when they wake him up and they figure out he's the problem, verse 8 tells us that they say to him, tell us. Tell us. You remember when the rich man died? Remember it says that Lazarus was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. It says the rich man died and was buried. Remember what the rich man wanted more than anything? He said, would you send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water? Is that how you drink your water? And then after Abraham said, that can't happen, there's a great goal fixed. He said, would you send someone, hey, hey, would you send someone to tell my brothers? You realize we're here to tell people. We're not here to sleep, we're not here to hide. We're not here to be disobedient, verse 8. Then they said unto him, tell us, we pray thee. For whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thy occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people art thou? Verse 9, he said unto them, I'm a Hebrew. You know what they're thinking? Big deal. By his lifestyle and what he just said, he made the Hebrews look bad. Right? I'm a Hebrew. They didn't say, boy, we'd like to be Hebrews. All they do is sleep and run from God. He said, the goal, he says, look at it, verse 9, and I fear the Lord. No, you don't. No, you don't. You imagine what they're thinking? You do. Now, just stay with me because this is all going to make sense. He tells them he's a Hebrew. He tells them he fears God, and they're not impressed. They're not impressed. They are not impressed. If you fear God, you do what he says. Look at me. Look at me. When you fear God, you do what he says. You don't argue with him. You don't say later. You don't debate. Look at verse 9. He said, I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Verse 10. Then were the men exceedingly afraid. You know what they're thinking? You have ticked God off, and God's going to kill us all. He's going to sink this boat. We're all in trouble because you, you made God mad. Jonah didn't say, I really love serving God. They said, you do, then why are you sleeping? Why are you running? Look at me, look at me. The world needs to see, not just that we serve God, but we enjoy it. 
Why did they get to have all the fun? Why do you have to be drunk to have fun? Hello? So what they think is that we, we're just a waste. We're, we're nothing but duds. I'd walk in the barber shop, my dad would say, this is my son. This is the exact word. This is my son, bad as me. He doesn't dance, doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, doesn't do anything. And I said, that's right, I don't do anything, but I'm having the time of my life. That's what they equate. I mean, that's casting lots. They don't have anything else. The Bible tells me how to have joy. The Bible tells me where my joy's from. Verse 10, then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why? Why hast thou done this? For the men knew, watch, for the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. Look at it, look at it, because he had told them. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, work tonight. Take everything that's said, no matter how it's said. But God... Take it and use it to drive us towards you. Please, Spirit of God, help us to see what we need to see. Help us to see things about us we don't want to see. Help us to be honest about those things. Help us to take action and use our strength not to run from you, not to run out of the building tonight, but run to you. I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. Basically, the summary of the book of Jonah, when God tells him to go to Nineveh, the summary of, of what God has asked him to do is that Jonah doubted God's word. It's a matter of unbelief. Hello? It's not a matter of rebellion so much. He just... He just thought he could run from God and get away with it. Then he goes to sleep. He's sleeping. Man, this just bugs me. He's sleeping like he's on the right course. Now, I'm, I'm honestly, please, please, I'm trying to help you. You know, it bugs me more than a, a rebellious sinner. Someone who thinks they're doing the right thing, and they're not. No, I'm doing what I should. I do enough or I'm okay. Jonah's a preacher. He's a prophet. God had used him before. And all of a sudden, he lost the sense of who he was. Do you know I'm a preacher wherever I go? They, they come to me all the time. They smell me. They come and they go, are you a preacher? I go, why? Well, we need prayer. I go, how do you know as a preacher? You just look like one. I'm going to change my look. Now follow this. Jonah's still Jonah. He's still a prophet. God still told him to go to Nineveh. But Jonah forgot who he was. He's still Jonah, but now he's disobedient Jonah. Now he's unfaithful Jonah. Now he's Jonah running for God. He forgot what he was here to do. He wasn't here to do what he wants to do. He was here to do what God wanted him to do. You with me? He acted no different than all those lost mariners on the boat. You and I have to be careful that we don't lose our identity. I'm a Christian. Look at me. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian wherever I go. I'm a Christian in church. I'm a Christian when I'm not in church. I'm a Christian no matter who I'm around. Hey, I'm a Christian. I'm not one of them. I'm a Christian. And oh boy, he should have never been on that boat. I mean, if I was God, I would have picked him up and threw him overboard right away. I wouldn't let him fall asleep. I would have let him just get under. Then I would have picked him up and threw him in. A whale swallows him and lets him live. I would have swallowed him all the way. I would have gulped him down. I 
We have to be careful. Hey, Christians, we have to be careful that our lives and our church ought to be, are you listening? Ought to be very different from the world. When Jonah's on that boat, he's just like them. It's not why we're here. We're not here to be like the world. We're here to be like Jesus. Amen. Amen. If I was sitting out there, I'd be amen. Maybe you're tired. Maybe you're hot. Maybe you're ready to go. We're going to go a couple hours. Amen. When Jonah boarded that ship, he didn't reveal his true identity. He didn't say, I'm a preacher on the run from God. I'm a preacher. I'm supposed to be going to Nineveh. You guys going the other way? Why, matter of fact, we are. Good. That's where I'm going. Who would want a God like that? Who would, hey, who would want a God that you run from? That's why they have to say to him in verse 8, tell us. You haven't told us anything. You haven't told us about your God. You're, now you're bragging about God. You, you need to tell us. You know why the world, we live in a very confused world. Do you know why? Listen to me. You know why? Because the lights aren't on. We're the light of the world. And we're not on. We're like them. We're doing what they do. We dress like they do. You know what? Do you know all week at VBS, you're still a Christian? Say, but it's VBS, but you're still a Christian. I'm still a Christian. No matter where you are, no matter what you do, no matter who you're around, you're a Christian. And if we're not the light of the world, the world will continue on in confusion. The mariners are afraid. Man, they are desperate. They're so desperate they rely on chance. They're confused. They're willing to try anything. They don't have any answers. How can you and I as Christians, how can our church be quiet and not give the world the answer? We have the answer. Jesus is the answer. Where would you be if you were still lost? I'd be dead. Look at me. I'd be dead. If God didn't save me, I, I was drugging and, and drinking, and I, I'd be dead. I, I mean that. I, I'm not trying to be emphatic. I'm not trying to be preachy. I, I'd be dead. Only God could take it away from me. Only God could stop that path by saving me. It's like churches are trying anything to look like the world and make them think we have the answers, but we look like them and sound like them. We, we want them to be comfortable when they come in. Man, listen to me. Look at me. I don't. I don't want them to be comfortable. They say to me, oh, I guess I'm not dressed up. I guess you're not. I'm just thinking when I say I'm before God, if you go in the White House, you dress up. Hello? You know, like it's it's you know uncool to dress up. Are you kidding? It's in for you, this is for God. Hey, I don't like your poochie, it's not for you. Leave me alone. I don't like color your tie, it's not for you. I'm not dressing for you, I'm dressing for God. Say your shoes don't match. Look at them, they do. Your shoes don't, they, they, my shoes aren't for you, they're for him. See, you get all covered, you think like the world does. We do have the answer. Listen to me, Jonah had the answer. Jonah's on that ship and he has the answer. He should have never been on that ship in the first place. The mariners would never have been in danger if he wasn't there. Thank God, I believe they got saved. Isn't that great that God can use our disobedience to bring glory to himself? Our world, world is confused because the church has been disobedient, quiet, and asleep. The world isn't sure what the church is supposed to look like. 
You know where I'm at on this. You say you're always picking on those poor contemporary people. Hey, either get in or get out. Man, these churches, they, they wait. How can a preacher get in the pulpit and look like them and try to convince them that Jesus is better? Their music's just like theirs. Well, we don't want them to feel, we want them to feel the music when they come in. And now they're all dark. You don't even have to take a Bible. It, it's a stage. Everything's lit up. Man, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. There, there, there is music. Shelly, remember the one I played you? There is music going on in our area at so-called Bible preaching churches that is worse than I played when I was lost and played rock and roll. You know why they're doing that? To reach people. I, I, somebody need, need to smarten them up. That's not how you reach people. You reach people with something that only God can do, something that's different. When a person acts like they're supposed to, watch, I'm going to show you something. When a person acts like they're supposed to, it makes other people uncomfortable. I would like to give you an example. John the Baptist. Remember what he said to Herod? Hey, you're not, you're not supposed to be with her. Remember what happened to John the Baptist? They cut his head off. You know why? Because he made people uncomfortable. He didn't call them bald, fat, and ugly. If you fit any of those categories, please forgive me. He didn't call them bald, fat, and ugly. We don't have anybody like that here. Just so you know. I don't want you looking around going, is he talking about <laughs> Or short. Maybe I should throw in short. Short, fat, bald, ugly. John the Baptist said you can't do that. I'm pretty sure several times they beat, they beat the life out of the Apostle Paul. Do you know why? Because they weren't comfortable with his message. Daniel said, oh, we're not supposed to pray? Excuse me, I'll be right back. I'm going to pray. They said, no, 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 you can't do that. He said, yeah, but I've been doing it. And God's bigger than you. They said, if you pray, we'll throw you in a, in a den of lions. He said, I still need to pray. And he prayed, did he not? Why did he pray and why did they not like it? Because it made them uncomfortable. So God showed them. Isn't God fun? I mean, that's just fun. They said, Daniel, we're going to put you in there. We're going to put a, we're going to put a lid on the hole. And God said, oh, don't worry about this. I got you. Daniel said, go ahead. Yeah, close it up. He's patting the light. They opened the hole. The king said, you okay? He said, yep. God came and he, he shut the mouth of the lions. You know why they wanted Daniel dead? Because he made them feel uncomfortable. He had three buddies, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar said, when you hear the music, you fall down. They said, I'm not sure it's fell. They said, no, uh People around and said, hey, do you hear the music? You three guys stand there. Do you hear the music? Yeah, we heard it. You better get down. If that, I, we saw that furnace. That thing's hot. He'll throw you in there. You'll melt like that. They said, no, we're not going to do that. We don't bow to images. We bow to God. So they turn them in. You know, the tattletales run to the king. Hey, there's three guys. And the king brings them in. He goes, is it true? Right, you guys, I'll give you one more chance. Is it true? And they said, well, you know what? You, you don't, you, we don't need another chance. Because if you give us another chance we go back out there, we're not going to pile. We're going to save you some trouble. That's what he meant. Why? Why did they want to throw them in the furnace? Because they weren't comfortable with them. They throw them in the furnace. How'd that go? 
I, when I get to heaven, that's, that's, I don't know when I'm going to have time, but that's one video I'm going to watch. I want to see that video. I want to see the dudes throwing them in and dying, and then they're in the fire, because I'm sure there's cameras in the fire. Don't be impressed by modern technology. God's bigger than all that. You know God had a camera in that furnace. And you're going to see them in there going, it isn't that hot in here. wonder why those guys died. It isn't that. Hey, Jesus, what are you doing here? Well, I thought I'd come help you out. Remember the king said, we threw three in, right? You know why they threw them in the furnace? Because they weren't comfortable with their life. One more. Remember Stephen? Remember when he preached what they did when he was done preaching? They chewed on him with their teeth. Do you know why they did that? Because they weren't comfortable with his life. You and I heard our testimony when we don't live like a Christian. We are the testimony of our God. Because we're not living all out for God. We're sleeping. We're not putting God first. We want to blame the world. Well, the world, it's so hard to live for God in this day. Then maybe you and I need to pray more. The trouble is not them. The trouble is us. The boat in this story is in trouble because Jonah was disobedient and God is angry and God ought to be angry and God is probably angrier with us because we have the answers and we're just trying to blend in with those around us. And our message to the world doesn't have to be relevant. We don't come to church to hide out. Jonah's on that ship. He's with them. They, they when he got on that ship, they should have seen something different, but his life wasn't right. He was disobedient to God. It would never work. He never spoke to them. He just went to sleep. They come to him. They ask him, who are you? What are you doing? Where are you from? Why are you doing this? You ought to be friendly to the world, but we're not here to be friendly to the world. That, that's not our mission. In fact, Jesus said, through James, James chapter 4 and verse 4, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. And then he said, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Boy, that verse needs to be preached in a lot of these contemporary churches. They're messing things up for us. They're making people think they're okay preaching from their cocktail table. It's not a pulpit, it's a cocktail table. What is wrong with us? How, how come we can't learn? Man, if we don't identify ourselves, that the world is going to force us to identify ourselves. You and I can be like Jonah. We hide who we really are. We're ashamed of what we are and what we're doing. But we can't be ashamed of who we belong to. I don't want to apologize for being different. I don't want to apologize. Oh, you don't do this. You don't do this. No, I don't need it. Somebody said, you don't drink. I drink all I want. I don't want. I don't need. Do you, do you understand? What makes the church the church? is when we, without apology, stand for God and his word. That Jesus is the only way to heaven. Through Jesus. We honor him. When they come in, we don't want them to think this isn't that bad. We want them to think, man, they are old-fashioned. They sing the hymns, and we don't apologize for that. We shouldn't accept, we shouldn't tolerate anything contrary to the word of God. Let me tell you something else you're not going to like. Don't take other religions seriously. 
Well, I went to someone, they go, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. This, I, I'm already, if they ever go to the archives of our sermons, I'm going away for a long time. So let me just make it worth their while and my while. Hey, here's something for you to read. Tells you, be sure you're going to heaven. I'm Catholic. I want to say, so? You don't get to heaven because you're Catholic. Listen to me. Don't disrespect people, but don't take other religions seriously. Here's, here's somebody to read. Tells you how you can be sure you're going to heaven when you're, I am Methodist. You're supposed to say, I want to say, excuse me, here's what you're supposed to say. When I give you a track, you're supposed to say, I'm born again, praise the Lord. That's why I don't take other religions seriously. You don't get to heaven because of what you are. You get to heaven because of who you know. We can't hide who we are. We shouldn't deny where we came from. The mariners decided that, man, the storm was scary. Watch, watch. But God was scarier. Remember they went from afraid to exceedingly afraid? That means they went from, wow, this is a bad storm, to, uh-oh, God's mad. I don't know what you think fearing God means, but I'll tell you what it means to me. I ought to be afraid of God. Well, it doesn't really mean that. See, that's that attitude, That's what got us into this mess. We kept we 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 we've stopped talking like that. Man, you ought to fear God. Look up, fear God in the Bible. Still there. They they were afraid of the storm, but now when Jonah tells them who he was, man, they're afraid of God. Men aren't afraid of God today. Remember what Job went through when God said, if you considered to Satan, if you considered my servant Job. Remember what Satan said to God about Job? Job 1.9, it says, Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Just because you're worth fearing, that's what it means. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 12. you got to listen to these because sometimes you, these are unfamiliar verses. Watch now. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 12. It says, Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. This one you know. He writes, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Two thieves are on the cross. Jesus is in the middle. One thief is bad-mouthing the Lord. The other thief said, Luke 23 and verse 40, Doth thou not, dost not thou fear God? Seeing that thou art in the same condemnation, you know what the world needs to see? The world needs to see that we fear God. You ought to dress like you fear God. Hey, you ought not dress like you're for sale. I don't know who can tell you this. I'm going to pay somebody to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. You ought to dress like you fear God. You ought to dress like it matters to God. Say, you talking to men or women? Yes. You, you, ought to, you ought to honor God in your life. Why, why would we not go overboard the other way? Why do we always have to walk this edge? I, I'm not talking to the camera. I'm talking to you. Why, why do we have to always be in there? Why can't we just go, you know what? I'm just going to be sure. You know why this wall is up here? To keep women modest. Say, well, I don't agree with that. There's plenty of churches you could go to. We've decided that's what we're going to do. We believe in modesty. If I came and preached naked, would that be uncomfortable? 
Hello? Okay, then let's dress like we fear God. I mean, sometimes got to get your attention, and that did, didn't it? Don't think about that. Just move on. It shouldn't take, listen to me, this is getting out of hand. You can't turn on the television. You can't look at a magazine, the newspaper, the news, the TV. I don't need a naked woman to sell me anything. Hey, are you listening? We need, we need to fear God in our life. I read my Bible because I fear God. I, I dress like I dress because I fear God. I listen to the music I listen to because I fear God. The world isn't convinced of Christianity because I don't think we're convinced. It doesn't work for us. You know, we just go through it. It's because we don't know the Lord. We just know what somebody told us, and we don't, we don't, have, the, we don't have the character to say, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to know God. I'm going to meet with God and spend time with God. It's like we're ashamed of how we live. Man, I'm not ashamed I'm a Christian. I'm excited. I'm honored that God would save me. So I want to act like it. I want people to see him. I want them to hear about him. You know what the truth does? The truth does one of two things. It either condemns or it saves. The Bible says, he that believeth is not condemned. But he that believeth not, Condemned already. You and I need to tell the truth. Look at verse, verse 8. Then they said unto him, Tell us. How embarrassing that the world has to ask us to tell them what ought to be so exciting to us that we can't contain. Remember when they told him to shut up in the book of Acts? Remember when they told him, you, you got no more of that name. Remember what Peter said? We can't but help. That's not us, is it? Your head bowed, your eyes closed. He Heavenly Father, please, Lord, change our lives. We, we've gotten so used to not being different. We've gotten so used to blending in. I don't want to be ashamed. You said if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. I didn't say that. You said that. I don't want to be ashamed of you, Lord. I want everything that I do. I want everywhere that I go. I want every word that I speak. I want it to glorify, magnify. Exalt the Lord Jesus. Jonah was not exalting the Lord Jesus. He was making him look like a grumpy old man. They finally threw him off the ship. They said, man, it isn't that bad. Let's try to save this guy and roll the boat and see what we can do. And then finally they said, nope, he's got to go. Lord, I, I, I want to be able... To show this world the, the joy of God, the peace of God. I don't want them to have to ask me what I believe. Tell us. Tell us. I don't want them to say that to me. I want to tell them. I want them to say, all right, I know enough. I don't want to hear anymore. Lord, use us. May we be doing what you, this all boils down. Jonah should have been where he was supposed to be, doing what he was supposed to do. And God, may that be us. May we be where we're supposed to be, doing what we're supposed to be doing. All the time, when we're alone, we ought to be in the right place, doing the right thing. 
Lord, would you speak to us tonight? Would you, would you convict us? I know you can. Holy Spirit of God, would you just make it hard for us to be, to be uh, 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 satisfied with staying in our seat and not making a decision? Would you make it just miserable and uncomfortable for us to be where we're at if we're not supposed to be where we're at in our life? May, may, may we say tonight, I, I want my Christian life to be everything God wants it to be. Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Listen now, your head bowed, your eyes closed. You say tonight, preacher, before I leave, I want to make sure I leave this place knowing I'm living for God like he wants me to live for him. I don't want to be ashamed of him. I want to make sure I tell people who I am and what I believe. Don't be ashamed of that. Why are you here if that's true? Why in the world are you here if, if you're ashamed of what you believe and who you love and who you serve? Your head bowed, your eyes closed. Say, preacher, tonight, there's a decision I need to make. We're talking to you. Not talking about anybody around you. Not talking about what you think about anybody around you. Talking about you. God speaking to your heart tonight. There's a decision that you need to make. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Preacher, that's me. Here's my hand. Would you raise it again? Would you raise it again? If you already raised it, raise it again. God speak to me, preacher. God speak to me. That's me. That's me. That's me. I don't want to leave here tonight without knowing I'm, I'm where God wants me to be. If God wants me in Nineveh, I, I need to go there. I don't need to be on a boat, blending in, sleeping, telling people uh, uh, that I, I'm, I fear God. I, I'm a Hebrew. And they're going, man, you don't act like it. You don't look like it. Help us to be the real thing. Last call, your head bowed, your eyes closed. Preacher, that's me. God speak to me. God speak to me. Hey, will you be honest tonight? We be honest tonight. Preacher, God speak to me. God speak to me. Come on, come on, come on. Say you're waiting us out. No, no, I'm not waiting you out. We're not gonna take all night. You just get in, say, okay, okay, okay. God speak to me. Man, I can feel the pressure of God on my heart, my life. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for going to the cross for us. Why can't we just stand up for you and talk about you? Work tonight in our hearts in Jesus' name. Piano's playing as you stand. If you've already told yourself you're not coming, that, that's a big problem. That, that's a big problem. If you live your Christian life that way, you're never going to be what God wants you to be. As soon as you get up, if you leave your seat and make a decision, that, that's a wonderful thing. That really, that's fantastic. You just get up. You just say, you know what? I'm going to go up there. I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to talk to God about my life. I'm going to tell God, I'll do whatever you want. I'll go wherever you want. God help me. Just tell him, God help me. I don't want to run from you. I don't want to hide from you and think I can. I don't want to fall asleep on you. I want to tell people what they need to hear. And I want to be in the place you want me to be. I want to be doing what you want me to do. She's playing. Come on. Come on, sir. God speak to you. You know it. You know, you're fighting it. Come on, ma'am. Don't, don't, don't just say you'll be done in a minute. Yes, we will. Make sure. Make sure you are where you're supposed to be. Yeah, well, there's somebody in this room. We're not talking about them. I'm talking about you talking about you. God speak to your heart tonight. Don't leave. Don't leave without making it right. Don't leave without taking care of it. Please, please, please that help. I'm going to ask her to play it through one more time. One more time. As she plays it through, you say, you know what? I'm going to give in. I, I'm, I'm going to make this. It. God, God is talking to me about something. There's something I need to quit doing that I'm doing that I shouldn't be doing. I'm going to quit that. Hey, preacher, there's something I ought to be doing. I'm not doing. I need to start doing it. God, speak to me about that. Come on. Why don't you, why don't you on, on this road, why don't you take care of that? I'm going to pray. Dear Father, please show us the reality of our lives. Show us how real we are or how real we aren't. That we can magnify Jesus wherever we go. make That he'll stick out. Not that people have to wonder. I wonder if they're a Christian. That, that's a horrible statement. It doesn't matter what they think of us or call us. Well, to just show them. 
how the joy of the Lord is our strength. We ought to show them the peace of God that passes understanding, that keeps our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. They ought to see that, hear it. They ought to know what we are. They, they ought not have to wake us up. They, they ought to just say, oh, them, there's them, them Christians talking about Jesus again. God, help us to do that. I pray this. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a few minutes, get a drink, go to the bathroom, whatever. If you're VBS, meet back in.